So I do believe that mushrooms are lawful, right? But I will say that when I first came into the faith, there were many brothers in camps and congregations that were saying that they were unlawful because they were a fungus. But if you look into your it for yourself, yeast and mushrooms and bread mold are all fungi. So to the brothers that hold the doctrine of mushrooms being unlawful because they're fungus, that would mean also that wine and beer and even most leavened breads, right? are also unlawful, which we know according to the word that were Israelites eating bread and drinking wine all the time. So Sirach 38 and 4 is something to keep in mind. It says, The Most High made medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not abhor them. So when you look into the medicinal benefits of mushrooms, they are antioxidant, anti-cancerous, anti-diabetic, uh, anti-depression. They help with your cardiovascular system, antiviral, antibacterial, anti-parasitic. You could go on and on and on, right? So you have to keep these things in mind. And if you are wise, you will not. So Tobit abort. 4 and 12 says to chiefly take a wife of the seed of your fathers and not to take a wife that's not of your father's tribe. Numbers 36 and I believe Deuteronomy chapter 1 also speak about marrying within your tribe or else you would lose your inheritance from your father's tribe. Now, all that being said, we don't know exactly what tribe we are from. Some of us have a good idea and biblical and, and cultural and historical indicators as to which tribe we could be from. But speaking from experience and speaking or dealing with certain women that have been from the same cultural upbringing as me and then some that haven't been, it is easier to kind of mesh or be on one accord with your values, with your food, with your heritage, things of that nature when you've been raised in the same cultural traditions and upbringings, right? In my case, with Northern Kingdom women or so-called Hispanic and Native American women. So the advice I have for people that are new to gardening is that anything is possible, right? In the age of information, ignorance is a choice. Now that goes for the Bible, that goes for gardening, that goes for anything. Right. So I would also say to learn how to build up soil, because if you learn how to build up soil, whether it be with cow manure, chicken manure, uh, horse manure, potash or ash or any other natural way of building up your soil. If you learn how to do that, you are also going to be able to grow anything because it all grows from the soil as long as it grows in your area. Right. So Sirach 7 and 15 says that the most high ordained husbandry, which is the growing and upbringing of crops and animals. So it's a good thing that you have the spirit to do this while other people are wasting their time, especially when we know that they are putting vaccines in tomatoes and other things like lettuce as well. Right. So growing our own food, especially in these last days, is a very, very beneficial thing to learn how to when do. When praying and waiting on the Most High is in working, I would give you the same advice I give to many brothers and sisters for all different types of situations. You cannot just pray and expect for the Most High to make things work like he's a genie and you're making some type of wish. OK, the, the truth is not magic. The Most High doesn't make magic happen. And we will always reap what we sow. Faith without works is dead. So if you're praying for something or have been praying for something for a long period of time, especially, and many times you are not getting it because you are not putting in the works necessary to get it, right? Like a brother that says he wants to provide for his family, but he isn't looking and applying for a bunch of jobs every day. Like a sister who says she wants a head, but she isn't on the lookout for a man that is more valuable than fine gold. Or like a brother and sister who say they want to get closer to the most high, but then they waste hours on social media or video games or Netflix instead of getting in their Bible. Sometimes waiting, right? A lot of people think waiting for the perfect moment is the way to go, right? There is no perfect moment. Right. Sometimes waiting is one of the most prideful things that you can do. Right. Because if the most high gave you the opportunity and the ability to do something today and you don't attempt to do it to the best of your ability. Right. That is you assuming that he's going to give you tomorrow to do it as well, which, as it says in James, the fourth chapter. Right. The scriptures say you're not supposed to boast yourself of the morrow because you don't know what a day may bring. And pride is the beginning of all sin. So don't be prideful in thinking that you could put something off, put the works off until tomorrow or next week or next month. And the Most High is still going to give you the opportunity to make it happen. You got to, to the best of your ability, attempt to make it happen today. And that goes with anything spiritual or physical. You got to put the works. So with this, I see a few different factors. Um, and everything's a case by case basis as always. Right. But speaking biblically, if you look at numbers four and 30, right. In other verses in the law, it says that priests 
had to be between the age of 30 and 50, right? It also said that they would only marry virgins, meaning that these aged men were marrying young women only, right? Luke 3 and 23 says that Messiah was about 30 at the age of his ministry, right? Saul and David became kings at 30. Ezekiel was called a prophet at 30. So taking all this into account, that age gap can actually be beneficial when the older person is a lot more mature and established, especially as a man, whether it be financially, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, etc. We also have to take into account, though, that females nowadays lose their virginity at a very young age. So why would it be a bad thing for them to get married before they lose their virginity? Right. I don't see that. So it wouldn't make sense to say that, you know, 5, 10, 15, even like I know a brother, his, he's probably 20 something years older than his rib and they've been together for a while. Right. That could work if it's done in righteousness and in the opposite perspective as well, right? I, a brother reached out to me not too long ago and he asked what I thought about him courting a woman who's around 40, right? He's in his like mid to, to late 20s. I said it could help. That age could help him mature more mentally, spiritually. She has experience. She could help him with certain things more than someone younger could, right? Because when you have two younger people who form a union together, and I've seen this so many times in the faith, right? There's going to be a huge learning curve, right? And when you think about business, I've had my own small business, martial arts gyms, etc. In any other example, you always want to learn from or be around someone who has more experience and wisdom than you, right? So in this case, spiritually, mentally, emotional, financial, etc., being with someone who has more of that is only going to elevate you more. So again, this is a case by case basis anytime you make some type of judgment, but like it says in Sirach 4 and 10, you should be as a father unto the fatherless and as a husband unto the mother and you'll be a son of the most high. You'll be loved by him more than your mother does. So if you have the experience, because like it says in Sirach, he that has little experience knows little. If you have the experience in dealing with children and women in general, and you have the wisdom to do it, then it could be a good thing. But that being said, I say the vast majority of men do not have that and they wouldn't be able to do it, right? And I speak from experience because I've only dealt with one woman who had a child from the previous dude. And it was very clear that she couldn't shake the hold that the baby's father had on her. She was not willing to completely cut him off in order to move forward with her life, which to be honest is completely understandable, right? You have a child together, but as a man, you have to understand as well that you have no right to that child. If you build a relationship with that child and you get attached emotionally to that child, right? At any point in time, she could just up and leave, which I've seen happen many, many times. And now you can't even see the child, right? You may have provided for them for months or years and she could just up and leave, right? And also you have to keep in mind that if the actual blood father um, wants to provide and wants the child, the child is technically the seed of the father and he belongs to him, right? Another thing that I've told brothers and sisters and they were very surprised by is that there's a law stating that you shall not take any of the children of Israel and hold them basically for ransom, make money off of them, which is also what a lot of women do um, when they leave the baby's father and they put him on child support. So as a man, if you do choose to do that, you cannot be collecting money from that man for that child. You've got to provide for them 110%, just like you're supposed to provide for the woman or your wives, like it says in 1 Timothy 5 and 8. So there are brothers in camps that I've heard personally that say and will say that you have to stay with the abusive husband and you stay in his house no matter what. But 1 Corinthians 3 and 16 says that your body is a temple of the Most High, right? It is your husband's job to protect you and your body, just like how Hamashiach loved and looked out for the church, even died for the church, right? That being said, if the husband isn't protecting your temple and he is being physically abusive in your relationship or in your environment, you have to get out of there in order to protect yourself since your husband is not doing it. Now, this doesn't mean you are divorced from your husband, but separation from him in many cases I've seen in the past is what it takes for a brother to get his act together. He should definitely seek counsel from a man of the most high who is experienced in marriage and can also rule his spirit because that can get to be a very sticky situation.